Hallelujah. Oh, so thankful for the Spirit of the Lord this morning. Yes. Thankful that the Lord is still moving in the midst of His people. Amen. Amen. I believe that. Come on. Hallelujah. I'm so thankful for His Spirit. Yes. For His anointing. Amen. Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. My, my, and I wouldn't trade what the Lord is doing in this little hole in the wall, Sister Sandy, for right. the biggest church that the world has to offer. Come on, brother. Amen. I love Him. Or two or three or Hallelujah. Yeah. Turn with me today to the book of Genesis. The book of beginnings. The 18th chapter. We're going to look at something we've looked at before, but maybe you pass this by because I know I have passed it by. Sometimes we need to slam on the brakes. Sometimes the Lord does it. Right. Amen. Right. You'll be reading along and all of a sudden He'll slam on the brakes at, a, at a, maybe a word. Right. It might be a word. It might be a sentence. It might be one verse, whatever, oh. that you've read over and over and over. Amen. And I want us to look at something this morning. Maybe you already know it. Maybe you don't. If you do, it would be good for you to hear it again. If you don't, it would for sure be good for you to hear it this morning. Genesis, the 18th chapter. And we're going to read, start reading in the 20th verse. Now, we're going to pick this up where we know how that Abraham had been led of the Lord to go out into, in search of a city, in search of a land, and God was going to make him the father of a nation. Amen. Hallelujah. And he took Lot with him. And they came to a place, and Lot was kinfolk. How many people know sometimes? Of course, it wasn't really Lot and Abraham that couldn't get along. The Bible says it was Lot's herdsmen and Abraham's herdsmen. They couldn't get along. They were, there was strife between them, so they had to split up. You remember all this? Yeah. Abraham said, you pick where you want to go, Lot. If you go to the right, I'll go to the left. Yeah. If you go to the left, I'll go to the right. Wherever you want to go, Lot, you go there and I'll go the opposite direction. Our herdsmen can't get along. We're kinfolk. We don't want to cause more trouble. We don't want to wind up hating each other. Amen? So let's split up. There's plenty of land for both of us. So Lot, he chooses to go to the plain of Sodom and Gomorrah because it looked like Egypt was well watered. It was green. Pleasant to the eyes. How many people know that most of the time what looks good to the eye ain't good for you? Amen? Amen. <laughs> Have you ever heard grass is always greener on the other side? Amen. Yeah. Or maybe you heard grass is always greener over the septic tank. <laughs> Amen. On. That may be a better way of putting it. Because yeah. <laughs> right under that green grass, there's some sewage. Oh, <laughs> Amen. God. Some fertilizer. Yeah. So Lot, he chooses to go one way. Abraham goes the other. And Lot winds up in a mess down there in Sodom. We know about that. And God is getting ready to send judgment on Sodom and Gomorrah. And Abraham knows that's where Lot's at. Mm -hmm. His nephew. Come on. His kinfolk. And let's see what Abraham does about it. Many times today we just sit back as our loved ones go to hell. That's right. Amen. Amen. I know that's hard, but it's true. Right. Many times we sit back as our neighbors just go on to hell. Come on. Exactly. Let's see what what Abraham decides to do when he knows yeah. that Lot's fixing to get judgment poured out on him. Come on. Amen. Right. Lot was in bad shape. We know that. The Bible says his righteous soul had been vexed. Right. We know that whenever the angels went down there, yeah. that Lot offered his daughters to the homosexuals of that city. Right. So we know he wasn't in very good shape. Amen. Right. Amen. Let's see what Abraham does. The Bible says in Genesis, the 18th chapter, the 20th verse, And the Lord said, Because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous. Uh -huh. He says, I will go down now mm -hmm. and see whether they have done altogether according to the cry of it, yeah. which has come up unto me. And if not, I will know. Yeah. So he's going to go down and sin always requires some type of judgment. Thank God Jesus took the judgment for our sin on the cross. Amen? And if we'll plead the blood, if we'll claim the blood, if we'll put our faith in Him, and He has already bore our sorrow, our judgment. That's right. But the Lord says something interesting here. He says, because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great. Now I wonder what cry He was talking about. Yeah. Some scholars say, well, it was probably the cry of the other cities abroad or there that, that were in the area that had cried and said, God, when are you going to do something about this horrible place? Yeah. 
God, when are you going to do something about that place, Sodom, where all that wickedness is going on? It's a place where you go visit, but you never return. Amen? All right. Maybe it was the cry of the cities of other people in the world at the time crying out for judgment on them. Maybe it was the cry of their sin. Maybe their sin had became so loud yeah. in the ears of God yeah. that He could hear the cry of the sin. Yeah. Maybe it was the cry of the innocent blood, Brother Sleece, that had been slain. Maybe it was the cry of the innocent blood that had been killed and spilt there. We know that blood has a voice. Right. <clears throat> What's well, what the Lord says over there in the first part of the book? Come on. Says the blood of your brother mm. cries out from the ground. Yeah. Right. So maybe it was the cry of those that had been killed. Maybe the wayfaring stranger that had stopped for some reason and never made it out alive. Mm. Yeah. But whatever God, ungodly things was going on, there was a cry that was going up, and I had, I had to stop for a moment and wonder. If it was the cry of their sin, I wonder how loud the cry of the sin of America is in the years of God today. Amen. If it was the cry of innocent blood, Sister Cindy, I wonder, I wonder how loud the cry of innocent blood is that Americans have killed through abortion. Amen. I wonder, I wonder what kind of cry that makes in the ears of God today. Amen. You might not like it, you might turn me off, but abortion is murder. Right. Amen. Amen. It's not a woman's right to choose. It's a woman's right to kill. That's right. Amen. Blessing, Lord. It's her choice. It's murder. That's right. It's the doctor's choice. It's murder. Amen. It's not God's way. It's man's way. Right. It's murder. So maybe it was the cry of the innocent blood. Mm -hmm. Maybe it was the cry of their sin of homosexuality. Right. Amen. Come on. The Bible says that's an abomination in the sight of God. Yes, sir. You might turn me off today, but homosexuality is still an abomination in the sight of God. Amen. It's filthy. It's ungodly. It's perverted. Come on, Amen. preach it. So maybe it was those things that had called God's attention. Right. Maybe it was those things that was filling the ears of God. Right. The cry of the damnable sins they had been doing. I wonder today how loud the cry of the sin of America is. Right. If you can get your ears tuned in enough to, into the Spirit. Come on. Deafening. Deafening, Sister Cindy said. That's right. He said, I will go down and see whether they have done altogether according to the cry of it, which is coming to me, and if not, I will know. Yeah. And the men turned their faces from thence and went towards Sodom. God sending somebody to Sodom to see what's going on and to pour out His judgment. God already knew what's going on. Yeah. But Abraham stood yet before the Lord. Now Abraham knows what's coming. He knows that Lot and his family are down there. He knows that judgment's coming. And Abraham gets stirred up. I wish we could get stirred up today. Yeah. Oh, we say we know that judgment's coming. Huh. We know the end is coming. Right. We know there's a hell that awaits all of those that do not accept Jesus. Amen. But we do very little about it. Right. Makes me wonder how much we really know it. Right. Or maybe we know it up here. Right. But we don't know it down right. here. Amen. Right. Maybe we know it in our mind. But we don't know it in our heart and in our spirit. We don't right. feel it. We don't feel it. Okay. We don't feel the urgency. Come on. I told you this week that God is far more interested in relationship than He is your knowledge. Yeah. Right. Amen? Right. Now don't get me wrong. Oh. It, there's no premium on ignorance today, but you don't impress God. That's right. We try to impress each other. Yeah. <laughs> Amen? Come on. I know people that try to impress you with their knowledge of the Bible. Right. I know people that try to impress you with their knowledge of mysteries yeah. and can't even live right. Mm -hmm. They don't impress me. Yeah. That made me feel sorry for you. Amen. Right. Amen. To, to whom much is known, much, much is required. Amen. Right. If you really know as much as you're boasting to know and you ain't living no better than you're living, you're in trouble. Come on. Amen. Amen. God more interested in your relationship Amen. than He is knowledge. Abraham knows what's going on. He knows that judgment's getting ready to be poured out. And in the midst of all this mess, there's Lot, his family. Come on. Amen. Amen. And the Bible says in verse 23, Abraham drew near. Uh -huh. Now here comes Abraham's action. All right. Abraham drew near 
and said, Would thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Now Abraham begins a conversation with God. I want you to show me in this passage of Scripture where it says Abraham was led by a great move of the Spirit. I want you to show me in this passage of Scripture where it says that Abraham had a miraculous encounter with God that caused him to seek God for, a, for Lot's benefit. You won't find it. He begins to intercede on behalf of Lot and he says, Peradventure, there be 50 righteous, I'm in verse 24, within the city. Will thou also destroy and not spare the place for the 50 righteous that are therein? He says, That be far from thee to do after this manner, to slay the righteous with the wicked, and that the righteous should be as the wicked. That be far from thee. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? And the Lord said, If I find in Sodom 50 righteous within the city, He says, I will spare all the place for their sakes. Now listen to what Abraham says in verse 17. In verse 27, I'm sorry. And Abraham answered and said, Behold, behold now I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord which am but dust and ashes. You hear what Abraham said? I have taken it up, I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord. Abraham, not by a leading of the Spirit, not by a, by a cataclysmic spiritual event, but Abraham took it upon himself to intercede for Lot. We could use some people today that will take it upon themselves. Now listen, I believe in being led by the Spirit. Amen. I want it. I need it. I gotta have it. Yes. But sometimes God's looking for volunteers. That's right. Amen? Amen. We use it as an excuse or a crutch many times not to do any more than we're doing. Well, I just don't feel led. <clears throat> there you go. Yeah. Think about that for a minute. How many times have you heard somebody say, well, I would, but I just don't feel led. Yeah. Abraham sees a need and he takes it upon himself to do something about it. America's going to hell in a handbasket. And while we sit around waiting to be led to do something about it, America continues to toboggan slide downhill to hell. It's time the church took it upon herself to intercede for the lost and the dying. It's time today we quit sitting around and waiting for God to move on us and lead us to do something and just simply obey the book. Oh, amen. Can we take it upon ourselves today to be obedient to the Word of God? Can we? What's happened to our prayer warriors? Exactly. What's happened to our grannies and grandpas who you didn't know what their time of day you went to their house? They might be in there on the floor seeking the face of God. Amen. What's happened to the church members that used to sit that used to lay around the altar every service because they took it upon themselves to have a burden for somebody and pray for them and fast for them until they saw heaven move? Come on, great. Abraham said, I took it upon myself. Yes. He didn't say I felt led of the Spirit. He didn't say I felt the call of God. He just saw a need and said I'm going to do something about it. Right. He just saw a need and he said I'm going to do something about it. Right. I'm going to take it on myself to pray. Nobody else praying? Come on. I'll take it upon myself yes, sir. to pray. Mm -hmm. Amen? Right. Oh, I wish the church could get that. Yes. I want to know today where are the prayer warriors of today. Amen. Oh, the largest percent of the church don't even know what I'm talking about. Right. They look at me like I fell out of a well. Right. Oh, Brother Billy, we open in prayer and we close in prayer. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. I know you do. And you also say, bless the meat, let's eat. And that's the, that's the length and the breadth and the height of the width of your, of your prayer life. Amen. Right. God's looking for somebody that will take it upon no way to your move to hold by the Spirit to pray. Pray. Take it upon yourself today Come on, pray. to pray. Amen. I know that's simple. I think it's the simple thing, just the little things is going to cause a lot of people to miss it. Right. Amen. That's it. We got to get back to basics. 
We got to get back to the foundational truths of the Word of God. Right. We've left those things in, behind, in the past. Now, I realize there's a growing up in God. Right. I realize you grow up, but you don't get rid of the things that, that are the roots. You don't get rid of the roots. That's right. When a tree grows up, you know what happens? If the roots are damaged or if the roots are done away with, if you took the roots away from a tree, Come on. the tree would die. Right. Yeah, the, tr the tree would fall. It would die. Amen. Right. It has to have roots. Right. The church has forgotten the roots. Yes, Amen. Right. It's no longer needful to pray. It's no longer needful to fast. It's no, I'm talking about the church's mentality. God don't think that way, but that's the way the church thinks yeah. today. Yeah. That's for the, that was old school. Yeah. That was old school. Yeah. That was yesterday. Yeah. That was for Granny. Well, thank God for Granny. Amen. Amen. Granny could get a hold of God. Amen. This church of today, I don't know. I, I might be better off not to ask them for prayer. Amen. That's right. Brother Hinton used to say when he was sick, uh -huh. he'd call for everybody at church, come up and pray for him. Uh -huh. He said, if you don't pay your tithes, don't lay hands on me. Uh -oh. He said, I don't want to take God robbing spirit to jump off of you and get on me. Uh -huh. Sometimes you're better off not letting some people lay hands on you. That's right, brother. Amen. That's right. I've seen some people. I don't want them laying hands on me. That's right. That's what Amen. The Bible says. Oh my goodness! Take it upon yourself today to pray. Mm -hmm. We're the prayer warriors that you could hear. Yes. You could hear them crying out to God all hours of the day and night. Amen. Where are those that the world used to call weird? Mm -hmm. We fit in so much anymore. Most of the church fits in so much anymore you can't tell the difference between a sinner and a saint. That's right. And there's no there's no separation to be seen. Exactly. There's nobody pointing a finger saying you're peculiar. Absolutely. I think we need to be peculiar today. Amen. The Bible says we're supposed to be a peculiar people. <laughs> Amen. But Abraham takes it upon himself. He didn't say he felt led. And listen, I'm not downing being led by the Spirit. We gotta have that. Right. I, that's what I pray and say, Lord, lead us. Right. Let us know your will and your way. Yes. And God will lead you. And His Spirit will guide you. Guidance. Sometimes He'll bring you up to a situation or allow you to see something just to see whether you're going to do anything about it or whether you're going to pray about it, whether you're going to try to help, no matter what, you know, whatever it is you're going to do. Amen. Don't wait till you feel led to reach out your hand of help to somebody. Right. Don't wait till you feel led to hit your knees and pray for somebody's lost loved ones today. Don't wait till it's too late to pray for those that are in need. Take it upon yourself today. Amen. I realize it's not a, it's not a, a popular thing. We don't go around looking for more burdens. We don't go around looking for more work. But if something needs to be done, unless the Spirit tells you not to do it, whether you're being led to do it or not, take it upon yourself to do it. Amen. Do something about the situation. Pray. Absolutely. Pray for America. Pray for your family. Pray for your loved ones. Pray Amen. for the lost that right. are dying and going to the devil's hell. Amen. Oh... God is looking for some volunteers. Somebody who will say, I've taken it upon myself. Right. I've taken it upon myself to pray. Mm -hmm. Oh, I wish we could get that today. Amen. I wish we could get the church on our knees. Right. Everybody wants to see a revival. Nobody wants to pray. Right. Everybody wants to see a revival. Nobody wants to fast. Amen. Everybody wants to see a revival. Nobody wants to come out from among the world and be a separated people. Right. Everybody wants to see a great outpouring of the move of God, but they don't want to be obedient to His Word. Yeah. Let's take it upon ourselves today to pray. Come on. Amen. Amen. Let's take it upon ourselves today to pray. Yeah. Most of the church don't even know what a burden is. Mm -hmm. You know what they think a burden is? The fact that they had to get up and come to church this morning. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. The fact they had to get dressed up, yeah. cleaned up, and shined up and come to church this morning. Yeah. You know what a lot of the church think a burden is? Because they had to put some money in the offering plate today. <laughs> yeah. Amen. That's what most of the church think a burden yeah. is. Yeah. Oh, honey, but we need to start picking up some burdens. You remember that old Spencer song? Let's pray down a burden for our families out in sin. Let's ask God, Lord, put a burden on me. Oh, oh. how many people have ever prayed that? Woo. I ain't even going to look at the hands. Lord, put a burden on me. Burn me down with somebody else's cares. Lord, put it on me today. Better yet, Lord, I'll pick this one up. I see nobody praying like they ought to be praying for Brother Sleeze. I'll pick that up and take it upon myself to pray for Brother Sleeze. I don't see, I don't know if, who's praying for Brother David, who ain't, but I'm going to take it upon myself to call out his name in prayer every day. Amen. I don't know who else praying for that little hole in the wall Pentecostal church, but I'm going to take it upon me today to pray for that church. Oh. 
I wish you would take it upon yourself. If you hadn't already done it, I wish you would take it upon yourself to pray for this preacher because I could use it. Amen. 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 I could use it. Abraham said, Abraham said, I've taken it upon myself oh, to pray. That's good. I've taken it upon myself uh -huh. to pray. Right. Now think about this. We know what kind of shape Lot was in. Uh -huh. We know that he wasn't down there praying for himself. There are people today that are in a place where they can't pray for themselves. That's right. Amen. Either because they don't feel worthy or because they don't, maybe they don't see the need. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They need somebody that will take it upon themselves to pray for them. Stand in the gap. They need somebody that will stand in the gap. Yes. That's right. Amen. They need somebody like Abraham that will take it upon himself to speak, to talk to God on behalf mm -hmm. of others. We've lost that in the church today. Amen. And not just prayer, but other things too. People see something that needs to be fixed or needs to be cleaned or needs to be something done in the house of God. They need it for somebody else. Right. The pastor, they wait for the pastor to ask them or the pastor to tell them. Uh -huh. Amen. Instead of taking it upon themselves to do it. Right. I've took it upon myself to clean the church windows. I've took it upon myself. Well, you don't hear that. Uh -huh. Church windows are dirty. Somebody get to it. I don't have time. Mm -hmm. I'm busy. Yeah. I'm busy. Take it upon yourself today Amen. to speak to the Lord. <clears throat> Abraham goes on and he intercedes some more and we all know. He'll tell the Lord this again in verse 31. Behold, now I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord. He talks to the Lord some more. He intercedes some more. and We've read it. And we know the outcome. <clears throat> While Lot's down there in the terrible mess he's in, all because of the intercession of of an old man out there on the hillside on his knees who took it upon himself to speak unto the Lord on, Abra on uh, Lot's behalf. God allows the angels to grab a hold of Lot and literally pull him out of that mess. Some of your family members need that today. They need the Lord to pull them out of the fire. Amen. And you can do that through your prayers if you take it upon yourself to pray them. Some of your family members are close enough the flames are nipping at their heels. Right. Yes. Take it upon yourself today. Get a burden and pray and ask God to move. Yeah. And don't quit praying till you see heaven and God move on behalf mm. of your family member. As I was studying this and the Lord gave me this word and it's not going to be long. I'm fixing to close, but... I remember the story that Brother Bobby Grove told on one of his records years and years ago about a young man that was in the army and his mother had passed away. And he went back to the old home place for the funeral. He got leave from the service. and After the funeral was over, there was a few people there at the old home place. He was standing out on the porch looking up at the mountain that the house was next to. And the preacher walked out and he pointed to toward the mountain and he said you see that path there and he said yeah and he said I can't count the times that I walked past this house and I could hear your mama up there somewhere on that mountainside calling out to God Lord save my son God bring him home safe save his soul before it's too late and that young man stood there and he thought about that and after everyone had left he was there alone he thought I think I'll take a walk up that little path where Mama used to pray. And as he made his way up that mountainside, he, he came to a little clearing in the path there, and there was a, there was a little altar. Well, the preacher had told him, I left this out, the preacher told him that she told me every time she prayed for you, she took a little rock and she put it over to the side as a memento of every time she prayed for you. And so as he walked up the hillside there, and he came to a little clearing in the path, and he saw there a little old-fashioned homemade altar that his mama had made. and In the dirt in front of that little altar, there was two indentures in the ground where mama had knelt so many times that it had caused little, little places in the ground. Amen. And to the side of that altar, he said there was a stack of stones about three foot high. Little stones, not big ones, little stones where Mama had prayed over and over and over and over. 
Because this little mama had took it upon herself. Come on. To climb that pathway every day and kneel down at that homemade altar and seek the face of God for the salvation of her son. And while he stood there looking at that little altar and that stack of stones and those two little indentures in the ground where mama had kneeled so many times, the convicted pile of God gripped him and he knelt there in those same, same little places where his mama's knees had knelt and he cried out and accepted Jesus as his Lord and Savior. Why? Because his mama had took it upon herself to pray for her son. Oh, tell it. Had took it upon herself Amen. to pray for her son. God's looking for some people today that will take it upon themselves. Right. Don't wait to be moved upon. Amen. Don't wait to be led of the Spirit. Right. Just obey His Word. Come on. Amen. I, listen, if it's in here, I don't care whether you feel like it or not. It's still in here. Right. You'll find very few scriptures, if any, this morning. I don't think there is any, but I'll put in there very few, if any, just in case I missed one. Where it says, live right if you feel like it. Amen. <laughs> live right today if you feel like it. Let your light shine if you feel led of the Spirit. No, 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 no. Take it upon yourself to let your light so shine before men so that they'll see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Amen? Take it upon yourself to be the light of the world. Take it upon yourself to make a difference in your community. How? Through prayer. Through your witness. Amen? Through showing the love. Take it upon yourself today to show the love of Jesus. Don't wait to. Oh, I felt led to help them. If you see a need, if you can help, help. Amen? Right. Don't wait till you feel led. Amen. Like I said, now we're not disowning or dishonoring the leading of the Spirit. Yeah. But I'm telling you that many times there's a need. Right. And we wait till we feel led to help. Really, we just wait and see if anybody else will do it. Uh -huh. All right. Amen. Come on. Take it upon yourself today. Take it upon yourself today yeah. to pray. Yeah. To help. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You can read this, and I, but I'm closing. You can read this over and over. You can find it over and over in the Bible. If you go over there and read the book of Nehemiah, and I suggest that everybody read that. I suggest you read the whole Bible, but Nehemiah is a real good place for you to start. We find that Nehemiah, news comes to him that the city's in ruins, that God's people's in a mess. And this man of God, falls to his knees in sackcloth and ashes and begins to fast and pray. Right. He goes before the king and asks him, can he have his permission to go do something about it? Now I challenge you today to go read Nehemiah, the first and second chapter, and find one time where Nehemiah had a great move, move in the heavens, any lightning, any thunder, a voice from the cloud saying, do something about it. No, he just took it upon himself. To seek the welfare of God's people. Amen. See, the enemy later on, would, the Bible would say that the enemy was troubled. Right. They were grieved because somebody had came seeking the welfare of God's people. Had he done that because he was led of the Spirit? He'd done that because he took it upon himself to have a burden for God's people. He'd done it because, he, and of course, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And you'll find later on down the road, you thought, you thought, well, this is something I decided to do whenever God actually opened the door for you to do it in the first place. But you have to take it upon yourself. You have to say, I have decided I'm going to pray. I have this, God ain't going to force you to do nothing. Amen. Amen. God ain't going to force you. If you don't want to pray, guess what? You don't have to pray. If you don't want to go to church, guess what? You don't have to go to church. If you don't want to help somebody, guess what? You don't have to help somebody. God ain't going to force you. God ain't going to force you. But you will reap what you sow. Amen. You will reap what you sow sooner or later. Absolutely. Abraham took it upon himself. To pray. That's what God's wanting us Come on. to do. Amen. I'm going to close with this. There was a king long, long ago in a faraway land. He had become disheartened because of the selfishness that he saw in the people that he was over. He decided to try to find somebody who still cared about somebody besides theirself. There was a road that went in and out of the city. And for the most part, 
All of the men rode horses if they were able. But the wagons were used for those who were infirm, they were sick, they couldn't ride a horse, they were elderly. So the wagons used the road. And the king entrusted some of his closest servants that he knew the word wouldn't get out that he'd done it. To put a huge rock right in the middle of the road where the wagons couldn't get by. The horses still could. They could go around it. But the wagons, they were forced to turn around and go back. The elderly, the sick. And he watched day after day as men would ride down through there on their horse, on their white horse, and they'd just go around the rock and keep right on going. Even if someone said, Hey, Reverend we want to try to do something about this? No, I'm too busy. The king hadn't commissioned me to touch this. King, he'll take care of it. The king will send somebody to take care of this. Amen? How many times have the devil whispered to you, God will, let, God will send somebody to take care of that. Yeah. Yeah, you don't have to mess with it. God will send somebody. So finally, there's this one man. He stops. He sees it. He just seen an elderly couple turn and have to go back home because they couldn't get into the city. Oh. This man takes it upon himself to do something about it. It wasn't affecting him. He had a horse. Yeah. He could go around and keep on going. Yeah. Wasn't nothing to him. But he decided, that just ain't right. I gotta do something about this. So he gets off his horse and he pushes and he shoves and he thinks and he ponders. Finally, after a long spell, I don't know how he did, but he finally gets the rock out of the way. Maybe he got somebody under the burden with him to help. <laughs> If you get out of the burden, maybe somebody see you're under the burden, they get out of the burden too. Amen? Push it out of the way. Amen? Pray until something happens. So he finally gets the rock out of the way. And he sees a paper that was underneath the rock and he picks it up and he unfolds it. And it's a decree from the king to the man that stops, has the compassion and the mercy to help others for the man that moves this rock out of the way for the benefit of someone else, I bestow the power of my right hand over all of my kingdom. Praise the Lord. That's right. Bless you every time. Oh, did you hear that this morning? Every time. Because he decided, not for his own benefit, mm -hmm. but I'm going to take it upon myself to do something to help these people that can't get through. Oh, I'm going to take it upon myself. I know today you are saved, sanctified, and on your way to heaven and plan on riding the pew right on into the pearly gates. But wouldn't it be better if you took it upon yourself since you are saved to pray for somebody that ain't? Since you are going to heaven to pray for somebody that's going to hell? Amen. Take it upon yourself today True. to pray. Yes. Take it upon yourself today to fast. Oh, Take it upon yourself today to do something when there is a need that needs to be met to do something about that need yes. for the benefit of others. Yes. Take it upon yourself. <laughs> well, that's simple. Amen. That's simple. Yeah. But the church has overlooked the simple things. Amen. Always <laughs> looking for something greater. Always looking for something deeper. Always looking for something new. Right. Take it upon yourself today Come on. to help somebody else. Amen. Be not weary. In well, well doing. doing. Amen. Time. If you, don't don't reap, you don't faint. You will reap if you don't faint. That's Put right. some wings on that faith. Amen. You will reap what you sow. All right. That's still a fundamental truth of the Word of God. Amen. Amen. Take it upon yourself. Decide this today. Mm -hmm. Lord, I'm going to take it upon myself to be a witness this week. I'm going to see you can have your hissy fits and act ugly if you want to. God ain't going to make you act right. That's right. You're going to have to take it upon yourself to act different than the world does. You're going to have to take it upon yourself to pray every day this week. You're going to have to take it upon yourself to read the Word every day this week. Say, God, help me. Help me to take it upon myself. Lord, help me to make a difference. Lord, help me to pray like I need to pray. Help me to seek You like I need to seek You. Pray for this nation. Pray for your family members. If you can't think of nobody else to pray for, pray for me. Amen. Amen. Me too. But I'm pretty sure you don't have to look very far. You you know people to pray for. Amen. You know people that need prayer. Amen. Let's take it upon ourselves to do something about it. Right. Millions of souls lost and undone. 
Let's take it upon ourselves to do something about it. Right. Amen. Amen. Church pews empty. Right. And a lot of times it's yours. Mm -hmm. Take it upon yourself True. to do something about it. Amen. Yes, Let me ask you something. Did you feel led of the Spirit to go to work this week? Mm. <laughs> huh? If you waited and told your boss, well, I would have been here yesterday, but I just didn't feel led. <laughs> <laughs> No, you chose to go. Right. You chose to punch the clock. That's right, brother. Choose to do the things of God. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Choose to be faithful to God. Right. He will always be faithful to you. Right. Amen. Someone else have something this morning before we go? Well, I wanted to